The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Camping here with one of my favorite people. And I feel like I say it all the time, but I just mm. get to work with the coolest people. Mm-hmm. So one of my favorite people, Don Wallace. This guy is great for a lot of reasons, but the reason I'm most excited for him to talk to you guys and gals today is he's got a fairly big company, one of the larger companies we've coached um, that he was still cleaning, and he is now not cleaning. So I'm going to let him talk about any of the things that he has made changes in his business that I think will be of value to you. But uh, I want to make sure we get what kept him in cleaning and how we finally got out of cleaning. So any before we dive into that, why don't you just walk us through, because you've been in business for a while. So just give us a brief history of Don and his company and all that, and then we'll, we'll dive into the nitty gritty. Super. Yeah. Thanks so much. So I was uh, lucky enough to be born into this business. Well, lucky enough, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. And, uh, depending on who I, you ask. Yeah. You know, scrubbing toilets at uh, 10 years old, believe it or not. And uh, I grew up, my father was a super hard worker. Uh, we were lucky enough. We always had AM shift in commercial, PM shift in commercial. And, uh, you know, he worked pretty much sun up to sundown. Mm. And I grew up in that kind of same shadow, you know, got to be there, got to do it, got to make sure everything gets done. And if there's a problem, you know, let me, let me unbutton here. I got an S on my chest underneath. I'll, I'll come out and fix I'll it. I'll go do it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, was I answering the question? Yeah. So, so uh, well, the, first of all, do you have brothers and sisters or is it just you? I do have an older sibling. Yep. Yep. That worked in the business for a little while. No longer does. And how did you want to take the business over? Was it just always assumed? Did you like, screw this, I'm going to do my own thing and then come back? Like, how did that, I'm sure your dad had ideas and you had ideas and I'm sure they kind of, yeah, I'd love to hear that story. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. I did always want to do what my father did. We had a, a, from what I can see, a pretty good uh, standard of living. But when I got to be 18, boy, I thought it was so smart. And uh, I left and I that happens to the best of us, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you can relate. So I worked five years elsewhere, mm-hmm. uh, another family member, an uncle of mine in uh, a different business and learned a whole heck of a lot. And in those five years, learned that uh, it's probably a pretty good deal if I go following in my dad's footsteps. Which is actually probably better than if you went right in, because I think if you went right in, you'd always be wondering, like, is it better on the outside? I something. You had a chance to be like, OK, I know what I'm quote unquote missing. <laughs> Yeah, it was good to see someone else's leadership style, and yeah. business practices, and you know those types of things from a different perspective. So they were really beneficial. Yeah, it was. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't change what happened. So I've got like an hour worth of questions just on this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna limit myself to like another five minutes, and then I mm-hmm. promise we'll talk business. But I'm just I love Don. I'm fascinated by him. So. Did your dad and you like from a young age, like when you came back, were you like, I want to buy it? I just want to work for you. I want you to give it to me. Like, how did you come back and how did you kind of work it transferring from him to you? Well, it just happened recently. Yeah, my father's 75. And uh, so when I came back, well, that was a little bit ago. And, you know, he was still the head honcho and and he was running running the show. And I was always an employee. And then uh, later on in life, I guess, you know, uh, right after COVID, uh, we did the whole hook up with a lawyer thing and, and transfer. Oh, I didn't so, know it was that. Yeah. I, man, I should have known. I thought that was much more ancient history. But this is only in the last three or four years that you've been the owner. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, man. Okay. Yeah. So, well, hey, that's awesome. Um, B, do you have kids and do they have any interests? Uh, fun fact. Yeah, I do have four. I have four kids and some of these, uh, I know the answer. They're kind of for the audience. If you're like, you don't remember, yeah. I'm, I know, but they <laughs> yeah. don't know. I got to pretend. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. So yeah, four kids and uh, two of them are uh, girls. Not sure if they have any interest. We'll see as they, uh, as they grow and develop, if they, uh, you know, are feeling that in my own business vibe. And uh, I have a son who's 18 and uh, waiting to, waiting to see which kind of path he chooses. Well, but even yeah. if he chooses out, 
who when 23 year old boy might come back and be like all right dad i had a taste of the real world maybe maybe we can talk <laughs> yeah well uh spoiler alert the oldest uh our firstborn is no longer with us so uh passed uh, away well, long, wait long no i'm talking about the 18 year old right right the 18 year old because you left right. and you were 18 and came back when you're 23 right. so i was talking about him okay okay yeah yeah so even if he leaves you left like uh, that's you know what i'm saying and that's very par for the course yeah right right par for the course so yeah we'll see how it works out all right. Thanks. Last question that I promised we're going to talk about how to grow a business at all. I just, I love right, this. Right. I know your bride and you've been married for many moons. What are, she's only known this is, well, that's not true. Cause she knew this is, were you married while you're out on your own with your uncle or did she only know you in your role with this company? No. Yeah. Her and I met when I was working with my uncle. Yeah. Okay. So when you came back, was she always like, you're always an employee for your dad. What do you do your own thing? You're like, how are her feelings then? And how are her feelings now that she's taken over? And we'll come back to her as we see your business as it's changed over the last couple of years. But like, we'll do that as a spoiler alert. Like how does she felt about the business during your relationship? She was always cool. And uh, I think both sides, the, the family aspect, the father, son, and, and there was no, um, no reason for me to be anxious or, or, you know, to, to want something that wasn't mine yet. And she was cool with that too. You know, we, we did pretty well for ourselves. We worked our tails off for it. Uh, but, uh, things were, you know, we didn't have much to complain about. Yeah. Natalie, Don's wife has come to a couple of the events and just, I don't know. I, I don't get to spend a ton of time with the spouses, but she's just a very cool lady. And maybe, you know, 12% of us, she got the same name as my wife. So I'm, I'm a fan, but just <laughs> her energy is very calming, very cool. She's a, I like her. She's a great lady. Married um, up. Yeah, me too, brother. I right, right. <laughs> you you were in the married up club. You can relate. Um, okay, so yeah, again, I could go on this for the whole podcast, but people tune in because they're like, I Don seems nice, but I, I need to grow my business. Yeah. yeah. So what made you reach out to us? Like when we met, where were you at? Kind of give us an idea of what was working, what wasn't working. Obviously, you reach out because you want something different. Like, what were you most frustrated with? Walk us through that. Dude, I was in the position I was, right? I was uh, the son of a father, a whole lifetime I spent in the business. And I was like, this is the last straw. I'm either going to fix this and not have this business be killing me, mm -hmm. uh, running me to the bone, taking up, you know, my whole life. Uh, I'm going to fix it or, you know, I'm going to find a way out. I'm going to do something else the rest of my life. And this is That's where I was. 20 years in, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. if I remember right, it wasn't because it's one thing when you're like, I'm making good money and I'm not, and I'm working a ton. It's another to be like, well, I'm not really working. It's kind of a side hustle, but it, you know, I don't make much money, but you know, I don't do anything. If I remember right, you were in the position of like, I'm working my tail off and I don't make any money. So it was just kicking the groin after kicking the groin. Like you didn't even have some of it. You had none of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, we paid our bills. We were fine that way. But afterwards, yeah, there was not much left and, and all the work and, and, you know, you mentioned my wife and kids and I can't tell you how many things that I missed, uh, because of the business, uh, with my kids growing up. So, um, came to a point where I was either going to fix it or darn it, do something else. Yeah. And it's so such a blessing and almost a curse with your bride being, you know, a lot of brides won't tolerate that kind of crap. So we get out sooner. It's very sweet that she did, but yeah. also it might've been nice if she smacked you a little early and go, baby, you got to make a change. This ain't working. <laughs> yeah. Hindsight's 2020. 20, agreed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In you know, hindsight, right. yeah, we've all got grand right. thoughts. Of, um, so for the guys and gals, and this is the big reason I wanted, aside from just enjoying spending time with you, to have you on the podcast, there are a lot of people in that same yeah, I pay my bills. Like I'm not homeless, but I'm working way too hard for it. I don't have a bunch of financial security with retirement. And like, this is what I did. And they're miserable and they feel stuck because, you know, if they're, I think we're kind of similar in age, well past 40, we'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, backside of our, you know, it's not like we got 20, 30 working years left where we can build something. Um, what was keeping you in that spot? What finally made you go, that's it, I'm shutting it down or I'm fixing it. And then we'll talk about how to fix it. But I want to make sure we're clear on the problem for everyone out there. Like sometimes I don't even understand why they're stuck. So now that you've got both sides of that, you know, hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. What can you see now that you couldn't see then that was keeping you stuck? Because I'm sure if I asked don't you then, um, and I did ask, I don't remember what you said, but I'm sure it'd be very different as to why were you stuck now looking back, but you've got a pretty clear picture. Then you're probably a little more confused or felt more complex. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a, a perfect question for the for the hindsight perspective. Uh, when I look back, I was, uh, you know, I had this glorified job. You know, I had this glorified job with 30 helpers. And uh, if I didn't show up and, you know, point, you go this way, you go that way, here's the key, call me and check. Um, I kind of ran it the opposite way of what I do now, mm-hmm. where I have, you know, systems in place and some processes, some really simple things that I just thought, oh, why didn't I think of that? Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, eye opening that, wow, when you do those kind of things and you, you have the right people, um, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be there all the time. Uh, I used to have to be there religiously. I remember with one group every day at 530 and come hell or high water, well, I had to be there. If not, the whole thing might fall apart. And at least that's what I thought. Hey, new friend, love that you are here. If you want more Cleaning Nation, more us, you can check us out on YouTube. Similar content, you just get to see each other. It's totally free. Or if you want to say, hey, hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, join our free Facebook group. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. That's what makes it magic. Jump on. We'll see you there. So what kept you there? Because you're not there now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's some external, like, don't do this, do that. And we'll talk about that. Or you'll talk about what you physically did different in the real world. But having done this a while, I found, you know, they do the whole, I'm sure you guys have heard the story of the, you know, the little baby elephant, they put the chain on him and they, they beat it into the ground and he can't, you know, they you know, clasp it around his leg and he can't leave. And then when he's a full grown elephant, he just pull the thing out. He weighs like a thousand, you know, thousands of pounds. Right. right. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. So he just stays there. So is that a, wildly unfair picture to paint around you or is, did you have some of that in your insides like i'm stuck here yeah i mean i would say that was it that's a perfect analogy i was stuck there and it's like my eyes weren't opened enough to see that by god there's got to be a better way did you think it was you because obviously there were other people maybe you just didn't believe it or know it there are other people that run cleaning companies and don't have to work so much and have a different life was it you thought i don can't do it or my business can't do it or this industry can't do it or like what specifically did you think was yeah where did you think the problem was or did you even think about it that granularly i don't know that i thought about, thought about it that granularly i i you know i was that uh that elephant tied to that chain and uh, a bit of it might have been fear of change mm. and the rest of it was not knowing what the heck to do to to fix where I'm at or what's going on. What What's step one? What's step two? I don't know. Well, let's get into that because I promise yeah. you people just wanted to like claw at their their, <laughs> their speakers going enough of the not just what's what step one <laughs> and what's step two. So you, you teed it up. I'll just let you hit the ball. What for you, what was step one? What was step two? What, what made the change for you? Uh, one of the biggest things was learn how to always have people ready to work. I mean, my gosh, um, just could never figure that out. And uh, changed having regular weekly interviews, bringing people in all the time that are looking for work, whether I need it or not, and kind of having my pick of the litter going, boy, this is really cool. Um, And it's just something, like I said, I don't even think I realized that that could ever happen. Mm. You know, it was that, that removed from that aspect of running a business. Okay. So first thing was, well, what were you doing before? So the after is I run group uh, interviews every week, whether I need it or not. You're going <laughs> to love this. <laughs> before, <laughs> I was, I was referral only for 15 years. I didn't spend a dime on advertising. And for employees I, or for customers or both? Employees. Well, Oof. both really. Yeah. I didn't advertise for customers either, but employees, I would just continually ask everybody who I knew or who used to work for me, who were good people and had to change jobs. Hey, you know anybody, you know anybody, you know anybody? And I might have to wait a month, two or six, but I'd finally get somebody. And so, that was, uh, that was, like I said, over a decade of doing that. Yeah. Without twisting the knife too bad. I just want to be clear on what I'm hearing. Because again, there's all these unintended consequences. As soon as I say it, you're like, well, yeah, that's obviously the truth. And it sounds asinine, but that's not how we see it. So I'm not trying to stick it to Dawn. I'm trying right, to right. shake the listener that's kind of waking up going, wait a second. What did you just say? Yeah. So another way to put it, and if I've mischaracterized it at all, please correct me. But another way to put that is 
for a decade, the growth of my, the potential growth, like you, you was 100% dependent on the number of people that I asked, or if I asked, if I forgot to ask, there was zero. And if I asked a thousand people and they all said, no, I don't want to clean toilets. Um, if no one showed up for six months, you're like, well, I guess I just can't take on any new clients. Is that overstated or is that? Uh, right, right. And in addition, well, I'll just cover the job until I get somebody. Or, or yeah, Don will go from working yeah. 40 this week to 60. I'll be the guy. Yeah. Wow. So right. really, it was just the belief of, obviously, there's how to do it. And there's some important parts there. But before you, the how to do it made any sense, you had to have the belief of, oh, maybe I should have a scalable, repeatable, dependable source of employees as opposed to unscalable, undependable, semi-repeatable source. Well said. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what, that's a big one. Stop going from hiring whoever shows up to having a system to hire. And if you're like, well, what's the system? Well, you spend money on paid advertising for people that are already looking for a job. And then you have a process. We teach a group interview and a one-on-one -on -one interview and a working interview. And, you know, there's some legs behind it, but that's, those are the broad strokes. Those are the broad strokes. Right. So was that it? Was that the magic thing? Or it seems like it had to be harder than that. What else was holding you back? And what other changes did you make? Well, in the hiring process, looking for the right people that you could let them do their thing and they would do their thing. And 99.9% .9 of the time they're doing it, you know, just like you would, or, or just like you were right by them helping them. Uh, so I think um, a mindset of believing that if you did get the right people, they would do the right thing, whether you're there or not, that kind of thing. So uh, along with the hiring, I think belief had a lot to do with it. And uh, a, a lot of simple organizational kind of, uh, you know, you don't really get into the mechanics and the operation stuff, but just things that you learn about simple processes that can make your life easier that I hadn't thought of or, or realized yet. So again, I, I think it's always starts with the beliefs because you're not going to search for how to do it until you believe you can do it. So mm -hmm. how did you make the shift from I got to be there. I got to give them the keys. I got to wear that Superman cape every day, all day. If I, you know, if I'm not like cracking heads and like directing traffic, the whole thing is going to light on fire. Which came first? Was the competence of we showed you what to do and how to do it? And you're like, okay, and that gave you confidence, or did you get the confidence first and then you searched out what to do? How did or how did that work? If you can recall, yeah, I think it was the, the understanding of wow, I can do that. You know, wow, I can, I can, instead of doing what I'm doing, there's, you know, plan A or B or, you know, make it a C. I'm sure there's plenty of other options that I don't even know about yet, but uh, yeah, yeah. And, and a good bit of the, of the problem was the people. Uh, they weren't the best fit. Uh, okay. So, so, was, so yeah. it sounds like it was a multiple step process. One, you had to realize yeah. I need people coming in all the time. I can't just do mm -hmm. a catch as catch can. Yeah. Two, I had to realize there is a universe where I could hire people to do a job and then let them do the job and not hold their hand all the time, maybe even any of the time. And then three, you're like, even though those people exist in the world, the majority of the people I have now are not those people. <laughs> is that bingo? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say in a way that wasn't yeah. super judgy towards those people, but good, good. That was the reality. Okay. Um, I feel like we've covered, I've asked the questions I think I want to ask, but you've had such a impressive experience and I know you've just got a tremendous opportunity to be an inspiration to folks. So I'm just going to let you talk until you feel like you said everything you need to say to the Don or the Donna out there who just like you said, they're working, they feel trapped. They're probably to the point where they're like, I got to either shut this down or fix this. Maybe they're a little hopeless. Maybe like, well, I'm sure you'd heard our podcast before something you heard another Don and you're like, well, that guy, you know, you, something in your head was like, yeah, but not for me. The floor is yours. Speak to them however you see fit to give them hope or value or confidence or competence of how to make this transition in their lives. Hmm. I'd say it's scary. It's scary when you're, you're going to change, change yourself, change your business change what you do every day. And in my case, change what you do your entire life. Uh, looking back and having that hindsight, I wish I had done it a decade earlier. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with asking for a little bit of help, getting that help and finding out, wow, this is some daggum good help. And uh, <laughs> easy with the yeah. language, Don. This is a family friendly <laughs> situation. <laughs> so, yeah, anybody out there that's in my shoes, I would just say don't do it another day. I mean, there's there's a better way. Um, I'm sure this is one of many, but uh, there's certainly certainly better options out there. It's not worth your life. It's not worth your time. And it's not worth missing, you know, family time, kid time and all that stuff because of this business, you know, that I'm doing air quotes because it's essentially a job at that point and not something that serves you, you serve it. So, um, opportunities there, you just got to go get it. I think we confuse businesses and we think we live, like you said, to serve the business. Like that's my job. It's my mm -hmm. baby. And I hate that analogy. Cause I think people, I felt that way about businesses, but it can't be right. Like, right. If my business, you got to get, I shouldn't say you got to, I would highly, having had good businesses and bad businesses and success and struggle, when I treated my business like a baby, like I had to, you know, I would give my life for my kid without mm -hmm. even thinking. But I, I, and if I go, would you give your life for your business? People say, no, I would never. Mm -hmm. And then they give their life for their business. They just yeah, work, yeah. they steal from their family and they just like, you know, I'm having dinner with my wife. Oh, phone rang, got to clean, got to this, yeah. got to whatever, got to put out a fire. And they're just like, mm -hmm. so, I think what Don said is key and just so you don't think I'm trying to, I have no ulterior motive. If you think I'm a complete, obviously like Don, he's great. But if you're like this, mm -hmm. I would never call you or your team. You're full of crap. So be it. Call somebody. Do something different. They're just mm -hmm. the reason nothing's changed is because nothing's changed, right? You've got to take yep. big, fat, massive action. And I don't want to put any words in your mouth, Don, but I'm guessing when you called, it was a little scary. Like, well, I got to, and I'm, I think I might be a little younger. And who's this young idiot? What the hell does he know? He hasn't, I haven't right. been in the business as long as you have. So you could have absolutely had your pride and be like, screw that or whatever your fear or whatever emotions keep you in check. Or you, I think you just got to the point where you're like, I don't give a crap. I can't live like this. I don't care what it, I'll listen, listen to an infant. Like I'm, I don't have any pride at this point. I got to get, yeah. I got to get out of here. So cleaning nation, mm -hmm. um, I'll give you in a second you know, how we can help you, how to reach out to us if you need help, but please don't let me or Don or a brand or anything stop you from getting the life that you want. If you think I'm full of crap, fine. There's someone that ain't like find something, do something, but don't just be like, well, I don't want to do it. Mike said on this podcast. So I'm going to do nothing. If nothing means I'm going to go back to living life, I don't want to live for another year or God, God forbid decade. So have this be your call of action. One of the things I don't love about the podcast is people like the podcast and they kind of mass. Oh, I listened to a hundred episodes. Like, great. What did you do? Oh, mm -hmm. nothing. My business is right where it is. I'm like, I'd rather listen to one and do something. Even if it sucks or is imperfect, then listen to a hundred and do nothing. Mm -hmm. So if that's you and you're kind of get a little tingly and a little like, ah, this is it. I got to, I, Don seems like a smart guy, but no, he didn't have any tools that I didn't have. Like I, if he can do it, I can do it. Put your phone down or your, however you listen to this thing down and take some action. So if you've got an action that you know is your next best step that you've been putting off, go do that right now before you listen to another podcast. If you don't know, um, reach out to us as a team. We've got coaches that'll talk to you and walk you through and see if they can help you and help you get some clarity on where you're at, where you want to be, and help you come up with a plan. Sometimes that plan may involve working with us. God bless. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> a lot of times yeah. we, it's not a fit and we'll try and get you some resource. And if you call us and it doesn't work and you don't get any, and it's free, by the way. And you don't get any value, call the next guy and the next guy or gal or just keep trying, but don't just settle for it. So if you want some help, you can go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Um, what else can you do? I, I guess you can email me, Mike at growmycleaningcompany.com. I'll try and get you hooked up with one of, one of the coaches to, to connect with you. Anything to add to that, Don, before we call it? No, no. Well put and uh, well said. And if anybody's in my shoes, uh, just don't do it another day. Such a good point. Great. Mm -hmm. We're ending on that. Don't do it another day, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging. We'll see you in the next episode. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me in the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can 
as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.